Excellent. It's 7.05. Uh, this is the uh, select committee to study various to serving on city boards and commissions. Today is August 16, 2022. This meeting is started right now at 7 p.m. It's um, and we're going to start with the roll call. Beth. Javier, are you here? Here. Camila? Here. Susan? Here. Gwen is still not here. Uh, Jana? Present. Garrick? I'm here. And Cynthia? Here. Excellent. We have quorum. Um, this meeting is being recorded and is being broadcast over Zoom and is subject to open meeting law this meeting. So hopefully we're going to, you know, we're going to start getting people. We got some people last time as part of the audience. Uh, hopefully we're going to start progressively to have people coming in um, less shy to be able to public comment. So um, we're going to start with public comment. We're going to wait a couple of minutes just in case somebody comes in. Um, and probably because we're not going to use the entire uh, public comment, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about about how, the, how we're going to be working that. So we're going to wait a little bit if somebody of anybody uh, comes in. Cool. We're going to close uh, the public comment portion of the meeting. We're going to mo move to item number three, which is minutes of approved meetings. We uh, haven't received the minutes from last meeting, so we're going to table. Uh, if everybody's okay, nodding or finger up, it's fine. Cool. So we're in agreement that we're tabling the, the minutes. Um, and we're going to move to sort of the, the core of the meeting. So if you guys talk a lot to, to the agenda, the first thing that we're going to be talking is assignments. And the reason why we're talking about that, it's mainly because of what we talked during last meeting, which is I was going to make a request to, uh, I don't remember, it was Laura Pamela that, uh, about the contact information for every single person who is in charge. I mean, this is a chair and the main contact person uh, that is not a staff who is not employed by the city necessarily in those cases where uh, it, it is a civilian in charge of it. Uh, and I got that list and I have it with me. And I, hold on, let me see if I, you know, if I can uh beth is there any way for me to share my screen um i think that is enabled do i have to let me see if i have to do something so sometimes if you go to share a screen being the host okay it, yeah host only or all participants yes all our uh, other participants yes gotcha so you should be able to do it now thank you and can you make me a co-host? So in that way, if I'm seeing somebody coming in and in the waiting room, can I just let them in? Thank you. So I I got this and I color I sort of color coded. Uh, I sent an email already to Daniela Madeo, who is the arts council chair, and I sort of I I tried to sort of color code it and divide it in groups of either four or five. 
and the only one that is currently inactive, which is the Municipal Affordable Housing Trust Fund Board of Trustees. So all the rest, it's um, it's we got um, their contact information. Uh, it's pretty obvious that there are places like this one, the Youth Commission, uh, where Alan Wolf is the con the main contact person. Or if we scroll down, uh, we have the same with you know Pam with the Board of Registers, or we have let me go uh, um. Uh, anybody with the Northampton MA.gov. So the, the idea is that we're going to start assigning sort of <laughs> homework for people because we want to start moving. We had been talking about processes. Uh, our last meeting was pretty interesting. And we got a lot of what information we want to be able to gather, what information we think is important for different processes, including the possibility of creating a, a a easy access portal for people applying to uh, to commission some boards, right? Uh, but one of the things, and certainly one of the things that we want to move besides, you know, technical recommendations to streamline the already existing process is to try to figure that out, you know, if those processes are actually functioning in real life. And the only way to do it is for us to go out of our way and start talking with the people who are already serving. And um, and I would like to get your availability. I would like to get sort of gauge how much this uh, this time available you have to do that. Um, we uh, just a refresher. We have talked that this would be really simple conversations about. Uh, the, the sort of the, the notion of the chair of the specific committee about how many hours people are putting. Are you guys having a hard time recruiting? How long is taking, and I can sort of write down all this and send it, how long is taking to fill out when they give uh, an opening, right? Or they, ha they have they uh, seen candidate that they would like to see, but those candidates are not being considered, right? Uh, I think that everybody here has a pretty keen eye on, on questions and even more in this specific issue, based on the conversations that we have. So I would like to open the floor to understand a little bit, guys, um, your availability, because I want to be respectful of your time. I want to be respectful, but I also feel that we need to start moving forward uh, and not talking. We're going to touch base again about processes, but we need to start getting a sense of what's the reality citywide. So I want to open the floor and I'm going to start calling people if when they raise their hand. All right, so I'll go. If you're talking yeah, about right. mobility, I'm busy all the time. Uh, but I'm here to do the work, and so I'm willing to to do what I can. Um, I'm assuming from what, what you said is most conversations should take 20 minutes. I am quite loquacious, so I'm sure it'll take 45. Um, but yeah, you know, if you send me a list, I, I think I know some of the people on the list. Perfect. Um, so, you know, like I, I know Alan Wolf, I could easily contact him um, and probably kill two birds with one stone because I have other questions with, for other things that I need to do, so. Excellent, so what I'm gonna, I'm gonna start doing, Gary, I'm gonna add your name to the, to the ones, to the one that has Alan, cool. which is the agricultural, so we are gonna get the agricultural commission the exciting board of assessors. Just don't 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 go crazy with that. Central <laughs> Central Business Architecture Committee and uh, Committee Preservation ah, Community Preservation Committee. This is interesting. And Youth Commission. And because we're on the record, my appreciation of this is just a joke. It's not that I find it fun or not. Cool. Let's Thank <laughs> excellent. Thank you so much, Gary. Uh, let's move to. Uh, I mean, Gary sort of jumped the gun immediately committing. Excellent. But I, I you know, I want to be respectful um, of your time. So if, if you don't, if you don't have the time, that's absolutely fine. We can find different ways to engage you. I'm just posing what I feel would be the most, uh, the task that would put us and move us forward the most, you know, uh, pr productive.
Jenna. So I'm sorry that I missed the last meeting. Can you clarify a little bit um, what the you you talked a little bit about talking with current chairs about it sounds like about the process of recruiting um speaking from the planning board i mean i'd be happy to go and talk to george but i have a feeling that he would say i have no idea go talk to carolyn um because on the board we don't see anything that's happening until they say oh a new member is coming on so i mean i've been on the board for five years so i'm not totally sure i'm happy to go and talk to him and to some other folks but i'm not sure that that specific line of questioning at least in that board's capacity that he's the right person to connect with so maybe you could just give a little bit more background on what the goal is of talking to the chairs as opposed to talking to the staffers so the the you know, the staffer is a liaison with the city. It's really simple. And in the case of the planning board, immediately when you said that, my question is, is George okay with that? Wouldn't he want, wouldn't he want to know who is applying even before they just show up because they were selected? I don't know. I, I start, I, I, wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that sometimes that uh, other members would be able to recommend somebody because it's a highly specific, um, highly specific uh, board? Right. Obviously, um, each 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 one, each you know, each commission, each board, depending, also highly depending if there are their capacity, which is advisory, if it's a temporary commission like ours, changes dramatically. So, what what I'm looking is it's it's a conversation about where they are, how they are doing, what they would improve, and what they are seeing. I appreciate, for example, that if Gary's gonna talk to to Alan Wolf, uh, if you can if you can talk to uh, take the one. So the, the cluster that I have with uh, with the let me see here um, the, the the cluster that I have here with the um, let me say the planning board I have. And I had the license commission, parks and rec, planning board, and the board of registers, right? Which are highly technical, are pretty specific. Uh, but again, as you said, you know, if 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 you feel that you're just gonna say, well, you know, I don't know until somebody shows up and fills out the position, I would like to see if you know is that working? Is that the right way to do it? Uh, is it? I mean, what the hell do I know? Is there a lot of white people serving? Wouldn't it be good to have people of color? Is there a lot of dudes? You know, we, we I mean, I, I, if you guys feel that I, I, I can make a list of questions, I will do it. But I, so far, I trust immensely your criteria. But if you feel that I, I can sort of come out with, with guidelines, for those conversations, I absolutely can do it. So Jenna, would you be able to do the that the cluster that I just mentioned? Um I think so, depending on what's your timeline, I guess. I'm about to enter a very busy period with work. So um I think I can do it, but it I can't do it like in the next two weeks, for example. Um, I could definitely talk to planning board and CPC since I'm already on them, that those are much easier for me to arrange. So if there's a shorter timeline, I'd be happy to do those too, even if it's divvying up your other categories. So um, maybe it makes sense for other people to talk about their timing too, and then see where I can fit in. I'd like to support the project, but also rec I don't wanna hold people up by saying I can do something I can't. Sure. Sure. Let's yeah. Let's let's keep talking. Um, Cynthia, I <laughs> the cluster that I have a possibility for you. It's let me see. Uh, I have uh, health board, uh, board of health, historical commission, ha housing partnership, and human rights commission. And I can I can sort of change because the how I know that when it's part of the uh, housing partnership, so I can change that one for a, a different one. Uh, 
Yeah, I, I um, have no problem with those. Um, the only thing I would say is that just my experience, I'm on the Board of Health, and um, my experience is in some of these commissions, you have the, and I'm just going to, you know, you have the staff person, in the case of the Board of Health, reports to the mayor, and then we have the chair of the Board of Health who is a community member. I can ask the same questions to those two individuals and I may get some very different answers, okay? I, so, I love different answers. <laughs> um, but I think, I think we have to be careful because I think that might happen in some of the other um, commissions, committees too. You're gonna get one perspective as a board member versus one who's the department head who works for the mayor, right? So. Yeah, I mean, so this, this comes down to, so the equivalent would be my comment in last meeting. When we ask the city solicitor about compensation, we should be conscious that it's an opinion. Neither the mayor or the city council is, ba is banded to that opinion. It's an opinion. It's an informed opinion, but it's an opinion, right? So my perspective, and I'm willing sort of to be a little debate on this or, or challenge on this, is that I'm going to say it. what the hell uh, a staff member is going to hold party line and I don't see that per a person working for the city saying anything else that what the city is doing right or what what you know whatever they are doing I'm not really interested in that I don't know if you guys are but I'm not interested in in sort of listening the party line I'm really interested about the chairs and then the members so if uh, that's what I want to hear Right, because the idea for us is to streamline the process and to sort of clarify the process and, and, and bring how people are seeing the process that are being part of it, right? So um, for me, it's more important, and, and, and the, the information that I got here when there is a civilian chair, so somebody who is not working in charge of the committee board, I, we got that email, right? It's not that we got the email from the we only got the email from the city person when the city person is the one as a liaison, but also as a chair, right? Like Pam. But um, but that, I mean, I don't know, Cynthia, what do you think about that? Yeah, I think that's that's a good way to go. Yeah, I, I mean, I think they all operate probably a little bit differently. So in our questioning, if we find, okay, I don't think I'm really getting the full picture here, we might want to jump to, to another individual that's on your list. So that's yeah. good. So I'm, I'm fine with the four. I think it's just going to be a matter of how soon they will get back to us and we'll schedule the time. And so who knows what that's going to look like. Yeah. So. And, you know, yeah, absolutely. Jamila. Um, I was able to talk to the chair of the Human Rights Commission. Um, and I can circle back and ask more questions of her if that's needed. Cool, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sort of, I'm gonna trade the Human Rights Commission to another one and I'm gonna give a new one to, to Cynthia and whoever you work with, whoever cluster of, of, of people you work, I'm gonna add to that one. Uh, the Human Rights Commission. Do you feel, Jamila, do you, I know you're super, busy but do you feel that you would be able to to get four um four contacts to to do this sort of to this interview yeah i think i could do that excellent let me see my my magical um and i'm sorry that i'm not sharing it it's only that my screen is not as big so when i do it you get lost and i like to see you uh <laughs> let's say um Okay. Oh, okay. So I'm gonna. Get, uh, so I have this one, Jamila, which is the uh, Council of Aging, Conservation Commission, Disability Commission, and the Human Rights Commission. Is that okay? Yeah, that works. Excellent. Uh, give me one second. I'm gonna. In Jamil. Excellent. I'm going to send all this to every, every one of you is going to get a, an email from me um, with 
this is this sort of assignment. Cool. Excellent. Mara. <laughs> Are you starting classes soon? Yeah, I was about to say it's my situation is probably most similar to Jenna. I'm wrapping up summer classes and work and preparing for the fall. So I'm kind of depends on timeline for me as well. Okay. Um, let's do something. So what I can do after I sort of rearrange things, I can send you both an email and because I do think that this is going to take at least if we're meeting every two weeks, at, at least it's going to take a month to be able to do the collection. Right. And in the meantime, hopefully, as you see for the agenda, we're going to be deploying outreach to the wider community at the same time. So there is going to be two different tracks going. So uh, maybe rather than having four or five, you can work with two, right? Because I'm also going to get, I'm also going to take uh, three or four. So in that way, you guys would have just two. And Jenna, one of those you would get would be the, the planning board, OK? And always, and I want to I wanna be pretty sort of upfront with this, if in any point any one of you feel that in, you're not going to be able to, to, to follow up and all that, let me know, and I can do the follow up. That, that's, that's not an I don't have a life, so it's not an issue. So uh, it's not a problem, right? So just shoot me an email privately, and, um, and, and we can make it happen. So this, you know, it's absolutely fine. And even more if you're, you know, if your work is being set up uh, is a lot or if you are going back to classes. Cool. Cool. So I'm going to be sending this. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to start moving the stuff around and I'm going to send this out. Um, is there any question in really do you feel that um, should I send uh, a set of questions sort of a, the questions as a guideline for you or do you feel that um, you can you every one of you can sort of take it from where we are uh i would like a guideline personally okay so i'm, I'm gonna sort of write a, a brief guideline with you know a set of five questions um the point is the point is essentially to get the gist of what's going on is it working is it not working what will you improve right uh and i think that has a lot of value and also because um we have been talking a lot about, uh, you know, some people in the community being cited and not, and even though they send uh, uh, sort of requests to be able to reimburse, but also, and I have been thinking about it, and we're going to address that, but I think it's good to sort of do the institu institutional view inside with the people who are already serving, people who have, a, have been serving for a while that I'm pretty sure they have a lot to say about the process. Cool. Any questions? So we're going to, Jenna. Uh, I agree with um, Mara that having a list of questions would be good and just to sort of give us all a shared baseline. And then if we want to go off book, depending on how the conversation goes, that seems good. Uh, I do think that asking, as you said, sort of asking people what they perceive individually as the barriers would be helpful. The process may be one of them, but they may see other kinds of barriers that we haven't identified. So having a sort of open ended question, I think will be good for our data gathering. Um, one question I have, or I would have if somebody approached me with these questions is how is the information going to be used? Can we quote people in the final report, you know, just so the chairs have a sense of um, what we're going to be doing with what they say, um, so that we can provide that up to them, information to them up front, and they can answer accordingly. Uh, so I guess that's a question for the group. I mean, I think it could be really helpful to be able to say specifically, we're hearing from this board chair that this is a problem or we got this input from this person. But then again, that might also limit the transparency of people's answers. So, um, but I think we probably just wanna to come to a, mm -hmm. a, a consensus around that. So we know what to say. Yeah. Um... So that's the reason why one of the points in our agenda is a strategy to collect testimonies. And we, we, when we met with Jamila and we were talking about testimonies, this was something that we spent a, quite a, a lot of time talking about, right? 
which is how do you collect testimonies when people, they, they would prefer not to be named and they would prefer not to, for details not to be told because uh, you can reverse engineer it. Oh, of course you're gonna know who it is. Um, and Jamila, if, if you can remember, one of the things that we talk is sort of uh, that privacy is paramount, the decision of the person giving the testimony, and this, this is independently if it's somebody serving in a commission, if it's a chair, if it's an elected official, if it's, if it's somebody in the street, if it's somebody with a, this, this would, this, I think what we're gonna talk with this is the general guideline for anybody from any testimony, right, Jamila? Yeah, I, I, when I talked to the chair of the Human Rights Commission, that there were some things that she didn't want to be shared. So I think we're gonna run up against that. So, um, you know, I, I think it's gonna be case by case. Um, all, there's always the questions, uh, the question of, um, is it okay to share something without naming the person? And I think the amount of the information that you're giving away is gonna is gonna sort of shape the answer as a yay or nay. Um, and, and this is interesting because, and Cynthia, you know this too. I mean, with the Northampton Police Review Commission, this was really hard. Uh, the, 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 the amount of harassment that the, the police department does with homeless, the homeless population is massive. The amount of homeless people that are willing to come forward with testimonies in details, which they have a lot, not a lot, and and that that was sort of that was really complicated, and 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 you know, and this is the same franchise people, it it gets also complicated with these people that you know they like to serve, they are they had been serving for a while, then they don't want to jeopardize that. Um. Any suggestion? I mean, I have a suggestion in mind, but I would like to hear thoughts about this issue. I, I think if it's a, a, a general comment, um, you know, I don't, I don't think in this meeting uh, we should be saying, well, Bob Jones from the Historical Commission, and I just made up that name, so <laughs> just so everyone knows, said this. I mean, I think we need to use the terms a member of the the uh, committee or commission or board that I interviewed, you know, pointed in this direction. I mean, I think we just need to be as succinct, but also as protective as possible so that there isn't any way to, um, to um, backtrack that it was a particular individual. Um, and it would seem to me that, it, yeah, um, and Jamila, when you said, yeah, there's, the individual you spoke to said, you know, these aren't really things I want to talk about. That just sort of concerns me, you know, because this is a, a city commission board conversation about how to how to make our participation better. So um, that's tough. It's going to be tough for each one of us to kind of um, um, cycle through that and make some decisions about how we're going to represent that concern. But I'd hate to lose a concern. So it's a challenge. Yeah, definitely. I, I agree. Getting sort of gathering testimonies from people serving in commissions, people chairs of commissions of select boards. It's it's a little it's it I feel it's super necessary, but also poses a dilemma in relationship to privacy and things that can be said on the record and off the record and how those things are gonna be perceived. Paramount again for us is to respect the privacy of everybody that if people feel comfortable sharing something with us, negative or positive, uh, it's up to that person to decide if that's meant to be shared. Um, I One of the things that we talked with, with, with Jamila was that um, we wouldn't name uh, the specific commission at all. We would just say a serving community member and and we we would we would disclose generally generalities, and this is something that is an invitation that me and Jamila are doing to you, that if a member comes with one of those experiences, because of the complexity 
of the of, of the of working with testimonies. If, if so, for example, Jamila comes with a testimony saying somebody failed X, Y, and Z. I because of uh, because of what we're talking, I wouldn't say. But Jamila, no, I don't think that's true. I I I, I don't think that person felt like that. I wouldn't. Qu I, I I feel that we should trust the member of this select committee with what they are bringing from their interviews and experiences, and respect the limit of how much identifiers or not can be chaired, right? So if somebody for this at the committee comes and says, well, you know, the general sense of the people that I talk is this, I would be fine with it. Because I would understand that that's the level of anonymity, that's the level of disclosure, that the people that that member of this like, committee was able to get and to be able to have all those testimonies delivered to that person, right? Thoughts? Yeah, I'm going to open the floor again. Jenna? I think that sounds good as a strategy and does suggest that your strategy of clustering is good because if functionally the only person I talk to is the planning board and that's now on record that the only person I'm talking to is from the planning board, I cannot then come to good faith and say, oh, the general sense I got from the vague people I talked to is X, Y, Z. So um, just logistically, I think we do need to divvy it up broadly enough that we can come back and protect our informants. <laughs> Yeah, and that's one of the reasons why uh, we mix heavily. <laughs> we mix heavily the 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 sort of the boards and committees. Um, so anonymity and, and privacy would be would would be achievable. Let's put it like that. Would be achievable. Um, is there anything in relation to this, Jamila, that I'm missing? I don't think so. I mean, I think that I think if we can get a general sense from who who we talk to of what I I have a feeling that once we interview people, we're going to have a lot of similarities across the board. That that's just my general feeling about it. That there's going to be some things that come out that are just going to be kind of across the board. So, Gary? And so, are we only talking about collecting testimonies from people who are currently serving? Or, or, and later we will reach out to people who may have applied and, and didn't get picked? Or that's a separate thing? Okay, perfect. Yeah, um, the, the way how we're our ambition in this is that this is, and you know, from my point of view, is the low hanging fruit. <laughs> and it's a, good, it's a good sort of warm up exercise for us to be able to start the conversation with people that, you know, we have their names, <laughs> they cannot go away, uh, they are serving, so it's related to what we're doing. Um, so this is, this is sort of a test of our ability to be able to come together as a select committee and get the information that we need. When we move to the next stage, which is if you know we have been talking about processes, now we're moving about testimony, internal testimonies of people serving in, in in committees and commissions, and now after that we're gonna we're gonna sort of be moving to the outfacing, which is which is similar to the one that we're gonna be doing that, but way more challenging, uh, way more challenging because that's actually is gonna require a high level of outreach, and. Uh, and probably we're going to have to put sort of a little more time in it and uh, dividing what we're going to be doing. It's only that I mean, starting uh, where when Jamila were starting sort of to think every st stage of what we're doing and how that's going to achieve a, a report. And we're going to be, as, as, as we said, as functional, as clear and really, really, really specific with recommendations. Cynthia, or you're just unmuted. Uh, no, I was just thinking and listening, but I would just have one more question about, um, you know, um, taking notes 
and presenting something written. Um, and so we have a choice of like, this is my write up, here it is, and then it becomes public. Um, or we just relay orally what our findings were during those interviews. So I think that that's something we might wanna discuss the best way of uh, having that information out. Yeah, I mean, all, all, when, 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 when you approach somebody, right? So one of the things that we did in the Northampton Police Review Commission, we created a, a, a Google form, right? But when, when, when we created the Google form, immediately that became subject to, to, to public record, right? So there was certainly a conversation, need, a conversation needed to take place before the person decided if was gonna do it or not. And even the form, before the starting the form, there was a huge paragraph about the data that was being collected, right? And, and so the disclosure and the way how a testimony is going to be collected is going to be in common agreement between the person giving the testimony and the person collecting the testimony. Um, and we need to be clear. Anything, if, so for example, if Jamila sends me a testimony on, on email, that's, that's uh, subject to open record. Right, so can can be uh, can can they can be a request of that documentation? Right now, every single of even even the emails about doodle posts that I'm sending you every week are subject to public record requests. Right, so uh, before writing anything down or doing anything, everyone has to have those conversations, setting boundaries and the limits, and also making clear. And, and this is interesting, right? Because those conversations, and I may be wrong, those conversations probably are gonna be easier with people that also needed to do the open meeting law training, also needed to do, to sign the same documents that we have signed and also had been serving or have served before, right? So those conversations, we're gonna have them because are needed, but I think are going to be way more easier conversations, right? When we move to the outfacing stage of this, when we're going to be going with people who have not served that may not be aware of the open meeting uh, of the open meeting law or public record request, th th there is when it's we are going to really have to talk among each other about how we're going to lay down this, right? Because we're going to be talking with people who are not necessarily not necessarily familiar with it, right? So right now, what I would say, we are gonna have those conversations, but we're, we, we, because we're talking with, for the lack of a better word, peers serving in the city, uh, those conversations probably are gonna be way smoother. And just a reminder for everybody here, uh, like our city solicitor says, if you if you don't want to see it, well, who reads the Daily Hampshire Gazette nowadays, right? If you don't want to see it in the Boston Globe front page, do not send email, right? Personal opinion, freedom. Anyway, cool. We're gonna we're gonna move, um, and we're gonna talk a little bit. Uh, hold on, is there anything else that we want to talk about? Um, in relation to this, I'm going to be sending, I'm going to be drafting guidelines, uh, a paragraph in context about public record requests, how do we establish a conversation with anybody, um, and suggested questions, right? Also, it could be that you're talking with the chair of a committee, and the chair says, you know what, you probably need to talk to one of my members. This is a person, right? And that may get really juicy, who knows? But I think that uh, a lot of conversations and needed conversations are gonna start happening. Is there anything, any question about this? Uh, Chair of the Human Rights Commission, Megan Pike, she just left. Uh, I was going to say, I can recognize you and you can say whatever you want. Anyway, Jenna. 
I just lost my train of thought. Hold on. <laughs> um, oh, uh, on the, you know, taking, uh, creating written testimony, I think to Cynthia's point, uh, I just want to confirm my understanding that let's say that I'm on the phone with a chair who I decide to meet with and I take notes during that conversation. Those notes themselves are, can then, are then part of public record because they're related to the conversation, correct? I would say yes. Cynthia's nodding no. My under my guess would be yes, but I don't know. That's why I'm so asking. Let me, so let me, let, me, let me tell you this. Public record request involves even text messages that city council members or any elected official are sending in relation to city businesses, period, period. The problem is that if cities comply or not comply with that. So imagine if it's a text message on the phone can be part of a public record request. So for example, I did, because of my work, I did a public record request with the Northampton Police Department because I was noticing that they were deploying drones in every single protest uh, uh, about police reform and nothing else. Um, <laughs> because of text messages, I learned that the Northampton Police Department was contacted by the Fusion Center, which is dependent, the brick from the state police, and the brick, the Fusion Center was asking the Northampton Police Department on text messages if the, they had a way for them to be able to access the live footage, the live feed of the drones, right? So text messages are, are part of public record request. Any, any document that is, that is technically, technically, but how you're going to police that, right? If you write something and just throw it to the garbage, how you're going to police that? There is, I mean, there are, there are limits to what a city can collect from their, their officials that are subject to open meeting law. What I would say is be mindful of the communication. Uh, as you said, I think the best way to contact people is over the phone or set up a conversation over the phone. And the notes that you're taking, think about those notes starting from the point that you're starting to take notes, think about those notes about that are that almost as if they were your final note. So you, you don't start taking notes until you have a clear picture of it. Right? Um, it's complicated. Well, you know, it was, it was hell for us uh with alex with carol to try to get the, uh you know protect the homeless population identity when we were trying to do this um but you know is that sort of satisfy a little bit <laughs> your your question it, 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 I, yes i mean i think my concern and the reason why i'm asking is that i just don't try if i don't take notes what i don't want to see happen is i'm then having to rely on my own memory make a verbal report here which then is going to get written up into minutes and then we're talking about sort of fourth hand rec a fourth hand record based on my very faulty memory so that's doesn't doesn't feel like a good system to me so what i'm looking for is a good approach to what i appreciate what you just said about um taking notes but taking them with the express intention that think about them as though they're part of public record and treat them accordingly um th that's that's an approach that i can follow so that was my main um that's what i needed because I, I know i need to take notes otherwise i will not be able to effectively report back yeah no i know i know it's challenging and i mean I, I don't know if somebody's, I mean, now that we're talking and somebody watching this, I mean, I don't know if somebody's going to ask exclusively for notes. I don't know. But the reality is, is there's a variety. Anything that is produced in relationship to the work that we're doing in relation to the city, because we're sub, we are a select committee subject to open meeting law and to uh, public record request law, we, it, it's, can be asked, can be requested. Uh, the question is, the city 
the city many times can argue that the city doesn't have a way to be able to collect that information, right? Um, Garrett. I think this might be, uh, and I think you did a good job of trying to explain it, but we might want to ask uh, Solicitor Seawall to, to just chime in to give us a yeah. So thoughts are, and not not that his thoughts are the be all and end all, but he might also give us some clarification. So yeah, I, yes. I, I, so what I was going to say is that I'm going to talk to the city solicitor. If I can do it, you know, tomorrow, I'm going to add best best practices to the to the document that we were talking with with Mara. Right. And I think that that's a good way to go. Um, so I will I will be back in touch. And also I yeah I think that that's that's related to that. Any other question? I think I think also um, in in the case of the applicants like people who applied or people who wanted to apply, um, and if those notes were um, for some reason somebody wanted to see them, I, I think the city has the right to redact. Um, where it feels um, uh, prudent to do so, and in to respect the confidentiality, which is what we're trying to do here, you would redact names, right? And so that gives us a little more freedom. Or maybe when we're talking to Bob Jones, we call Bob number one, <laughs> you know, in our notes. Um, so I think there's ways to to get around it. Yeah. No. Yeah. Absolutely. And there are the, yeah the, there are different layers, right? Mm -hmm. um, I have talked to people that they didn't even would like the city to know that they are speaking up. So I would say not, not they are not even worried about somebody doing a public record request and, the, and exposing their testimony, right? They are more worried about that the city learns their, that they are the ones giving it, right? Which raises a different set of questions, right? And I think if if you, Jenna, and, and I think Cynthia makes a really good point, if you want to take notes that are immediately self censor in a way that the names or it, it's sort of, it's change, feel free to do it. Okay, but anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to talk to uh, the city leader tomorrow and, and try to have at least three or four best practices uh, sentences for us to be able to collect uh, testimonies. Perfect. And if you guys think about anything else, any sort of issue that may arise that I can also ask uh, Attorney C. Well, just shoot me an email, right? Just remember, just shoot me a, one single email to me. Do not email the entire group. Talking about uh, violating of a mini law. Um, excellent. Um, so we get to the possible compensation uh, point that we have touched a little bit based and we are just, um, and, and I know Jamila, you were on vacation <laughs> uh, last week. So one of the things that we're gonna do, and I'm gonna do it uh, when I talk, hopefully when I talk to him tomorrow, is I'm gonna request a written opinion in relation to compensation. Uh, I do know that Amherst has done, um, has paid people serving in committees. And I know that there are, Northampton used to do it time ago, if you if you read the, the documents that Pam and Laura send us. And Greenfield right now is sort of debating the creation of a task force in relation to the police incidents that happened and the court decision that came down. And that one is also being talked about the possibility of compensation. So it's it. I'm saying that because it's uh, it's not an isolated issue, right? And even more when you know um, we want people serving that actual money is not is not a barrier, or or being able to pay for childcare is not a barrier. So that's gonna come. That's gonna probably gonna ask for a written decision, a written decision, a written opinion in it. Um, but, but at the same time, I wanted to let Garrick and Jamila, if you guys, and, and feel free to say no. As city councilors, I think you would be in a better position to ask for that. Um, and I think that's, you know, it could be faster and, and better. But if not, I can just, just ask for that.
I can ask him for a written, Perfect. like a written opinion about compensation for committees and commission. Yeah. Excellent. 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 Love it. Um, cool. Um, so last, we're going to move to formulating regular requests to request data. We uh, we got we came out with a big list of data that we want to ask the city. We were talking about demographic. We were talking about homeowner versus renter. We were talking about race. We were talking about um, other things. So I want to sort of reactivate a little bit the conversation. Um, having in mind that we had um, more people than than the last time to to talk a little bit more in relation to what would be a data point that we may want to get from the city. And just to clarify and to explain um, this, I would like to include even those data points that we may say, you know, the city is not collecting that. I don't know if they are not collecting it. I think they should. So we should ask about that, right? Um, Cynthia? Um, yeah, in terms of a data point, I would be interested since the process as written is to fill out an application for an open position and all those applications are routed through the mayor's office. So to get a list of everyone who has ever applied um, for an open position within a certain period of time, because that's going to be our that's also going to be our database to contact people. And now those are the applicants. And then we have all those people that never applied because they were intimidated or, or just, just said, forget it, I'm not going to do this. So it's kind of two populations there. We got to try to begin to develop um, um, a group of people that we want to talk to. So, And that should be public record, actually. I think anyone could ask for that. Yes. <laughs> yes. With the with the race that is would be redacted in some portions so that's something that uh i'm gonna i'm gonna make sure to ask tomorrow but I, yeah i think that that's important um and i think it was either mara or jenna the one that who mentioned the renter versus owner um i don't know if they are they are sort of gathering that information that that one was one of the, the, the got a lot of my attention uh, even more because I, I live in Ward 3, which is, you know, uh, the so-called renter's word. So um, it would be interesting to know. Is there any other thing? I mean, there is a lot of there is a lot of the list that I have and more that is coming down when we get the minutes. Um, but I, I still would like sort of to push a little bit about the data points. Um, because I think this is you know, and, and for, this is for people who was not uh, in our last meeting, one of the really concrete recommendations that we may be able to do is to bound the city to a specific reporting uh, that they have to do every couple of months, every six months, every four months, three times a year, twice a year. So, um, that that would be really helpful for advocates that would be really helpful for transparency that would be really helpful uh as garrick mentioned a couple of meetings ago uh that would be really helpful as a as a as a, as a sort of snap a snapchat whatever it, like a still of that moment where we are with with the people serving in city commissions right i think that would be really useful so Probably we're going to keep talking about this because I think we can come with more and more stuff. Um, I really appreciate Pam and Beth and Laura and the fact that, you know, I don't think the city had a, a consolidated list of contact information for uh, civilian chairs of the board and they put it together for us. And I, I really appreciate that. Um, and I think we're, we're going to keep bothering them and sort of pushing the envelope with this. But I think I think it's good. I think that's what we need to do. Um, any other recommendation? And again, any of these conversations, if you guys have any comment or you think about something, you can email me 
uh, with, with, the, with the common idea recommendation. I have a thought. Jenna? Um, I'm, I'm gonna say this recognizing that um, this may not be available and or may not be able to be shared, but in an ideal world, I would love to not just get the list of applicants that Cynthia was talking about, but get a breakdown of how many of those applicants um, ended up actually being appointed and how many weren't and how many, if there were any who sort of began the process of being appointed and didn't make it all the way through, or if it's just sort of a formality that if they even take the time to start the process, if you finish all of the steps, you're bound to get appointed at the end of it. Um, and if we can learn something from that about, are there trends in who's getting appointed or who's starting the process versus who isn't? Or is it the case that there's such a shortage of applications that basically anybody who applies is going to get appointed by default unless they're wildly underqualified um, just because we need, you know, butts in seats. Um, there was something in some of the materials that Pam shared with us that talked about looking that qualified applicants are advanced, um, but there was not a lot of information about what constitutes being qualified and in the descriptions of the boards there are only a few that seem to that have specific requirements around we need to have a certain number of i can't remember exact maybe lawyers or people from a particular profession or something like that but in the case of everywhere else what is what is qualified actually look like um is there a rubric for that, who makes those determinations? So that, that again, I'm not. Those are multiple different questions. I'm not sure how much of that data we can actually access. Um, but one of my questions about the barriers is: uh, is the barrier actually getting to the application point, and might it be that the application process is itself more of a formality than we might think that it is? Um, but I, I don't know. So I'd be really curious to, to learn more about that. Perfect. This is literally what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, this is literally what I'm talking about. Yes. I. Yeah. I took notes. I was I was literally writing while you were talking, Jenna. Uh, and I think that yeah, this is this is really good. Um, this is really good. Um, excellent. Um, I had another data point too. We, um, looking at how many years of service, how many terms people whether or not you do it multiple times. I think that's something we did not discuss last time. So we should add that. This is really, this is really good. And even more because there is sort of a starting a statewide discussion about terms limit with other positions, with elected positions. So <laughs> this is really good. This is really, really good. Um, excellent. I'm sort of tabulating my notes. Uh, this is Cynthia. Excellent. Excellent. Is there any other great idea? Because these are really, really good. Cynthia. Yeah, I just want to echo um, what Jenna pointed out about this term qualified. While, while you were talking, Jenna, I went into the website and I went into Pam's material. And nowhere does it say what, what are the qualifications. And I'm not suggesting that there should be or shouldn't be, but um, I only wanna give this uh, anecdotal story that an individual approached me and said, I'd like to apply for this board, but I live in this other town. Um, do you think I can apply? Cause I used to live in Northampton and I call up the mayor's office and they said, that's purely at the discretion of the mayor. So that's that's kind of an open qualification right there. And so I think we really need to, I'm not saying we need to, you gotta be a resident or you gotta be a rent, renter and a taxpayer or not in arrears or anything like that. But I, I just think, I just wanna echo, that's a really important point. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, any other comment? Jamila. Well, maybe we could also look at if um, 
if someone is serving on multiple commissions and committees or if they've been on them before, been on other ones, or this in related to like how long somebody has served, like if they've been on other commissions and committees? I, Javier, uh, Jamila's statement reminds me that maybe we want to go over the list that you have already, because we did talk about that last week, Jamila. Um, so maybe if we just go through what we have, so then it just refreshes everyone. Yeah, yeah. As soon as soon, so what we're gonna do uh, as soon as we get the minutes, <laughs> we're gonna be able to consolidate all the, the. I have this in my second list plus the one that we're gonna get sort of clear with the minutes. Okay. Um, so as soon as I have that, I will send it to every one of you. Um, so, um, yeah, yeah, it's um, uh, you know, I. Also, also, you know, how in this year, I would like to know how the positions are being promoted, right? Uh, you know, I remember having a, 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 a tiny bit of an argument with a local mayor, not Northampton, but a different town, uh, you know, pointing out that, well, most of the people serving in, in that town or city uh, are upper middle class white people retired. And the reason I said, you know, in a, in a really sort of a polite way and respectful way is because the way how you promote it, right? And you put it on, a, on the website, uh, you put it in, in the library. Um, and those are places where, you know, there is a demographic that is paying attention to that. There is, there is a group that it has access to internet, that has access to, you know, to be sort of uh, informed about what's going on. And there is a, you know, and there is a huge amount of percentage of community and population that don't fit that character. And that's one of the reasons. So I would love to, to learn how, how they go around promoting and advertising uh, uh, open seats on uh, boards. Yes. And, and this is this ties pretty well with what you were saying, Jenna. That it, it, it sometimes you know maybe we want to see the chairs that are really well acquainted with what's going on, on, having a better take into a say into into nominations and into recommending people to serve, right? Um, and and you know this is going to be dramatically different in in as Jenna said in in those boards and commissions that have sort of a professional requirements and people you know they 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 are, they are going to depend on their profession to be able to make the cut um cool this is really good jenna uh, i was going to say something very similar about wanting to know more about the advertising practices because i think the only thing in the official documentation is that it's posted on the website um so and if that's the only practice that's the only practice but anecdotally i know on the planning board that um, when we have a vacancy, certainly members are encouraged to, if we know someone who might be interested to pass it around. So I share that because I think that might be worth asking when we talk to chairs to talk about what are some of those informal processes that are already happening around recruitment that aren't gonna show up in the official city documentation, but um, uh, there's probably some, some good and some bad things in that. Um, in terms of sort of working from within the board that you already have um, for connection. So anyway, I, I say that mostly just when you're thinking about the list of questions to for guidelines for our conversation with chairs, I think that would be a good point to ask about. You're I just, muted. just wrote it in the section, possible questions. Uh, <laughs> uh, cool. cool, 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 cool. Excellent, let me... Um, Oh, um, is there anything else in relation to this um, topic that we may want to talk? Um, let me see. Um, cool. So, Jamila, do you need any kind of support um, or uh, sending the question to the city solicitor, or you got it? I think I got it. I think I got it. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Um, let me, I'm 
close my uh okay close your mom new businesses uh jenna I wanted to say one other thing about data collection that I do have a new business item. On data collection, this isn't something that we would ask the city for, um, but I think once we see what we get from the chair is once we figure out what data we do and don't have about specifically what's happening in Northampton, I would not want us to ignore a body of academic and other literature out there from people who have studied these kinds of issues in other contexts and other communities, if there are things that we can borrow from. I think Mara has some experience in that. I have some. So when we're thinking about future tasks and assignments, we don't need to fully reinvent the wheel. And when it's time, I certainly hope that we can bring some of that data into the conversation as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the beautiful thing in my head is that we're going to have, you know, the inside uh, knowledge. And after that, when we do the out the outreach, we're going to have that to be able to, you know, to go through all this process that that is going to be informed and i i agree with we don't have to bring in the wheel i mean there is there is a lot of knowledge in this group and there is a lot of expertise in this group that we can certainly do it and i i, I i'm gonna love when we get to that to that point i think you guys are gonna be incredible um new businesses um so so far um, you know, me and Jamila have been doing the the um, the agenda sort of unilaterally because we are we're trying to sort of we were trying to find our focus right, uh, and at the end we were talking about uh, processes. We're transitioning towards uh, internal narrative and talking with with people who are you know embedded in the system. We're going to move also to, to an outfacing process where we're doing a lot of outreach. But also, we would like, me and Jamila would like to invite you to um, send me uh, agenda items. And I think that that's how we, we should do it from now. Uh, even more because if you guys are going to start talking with people, I know that's going to sort of stimulate your thinking in what we should be talking and i want to we want to be extremely responsive to that right because if not i'm going to have to get just pontificating uh, so that's one of new business is there any other new business that anybody would like to mention garrick no no okay <laughs> jenna um i I'm hoping that we can return to the topic of possibly finding a regular schedule um, with um, my schedule during the academic year is a lot less flexible. One of my boards was off for the summer and is going to pick up back in September. So um, I'm about to have less flexibility and be at a time when I would appreciate much more having a regular knowing when these meetings are coming so that I can pace my work and other scheduling around them. So very much appreciate all of your efforts to pick times that work for everybody sort of week by week as we've been doing but i'm wondering if we can revisit and hopefully secure a, a regular meeting time from here on out because that will help uh enable my participation um in the months to come so jenna can, would you able to would you be able to send me sort of options in your schedule for, for a fixed day every two weeks? Like sort of two options. So we can sort of roll it to the to the group and start start from there. Because I think that um, I think we can do it. Uh, but I'm also an optimistic person. So I don't know if that's my optimism speaking or <laughs> or reality. So um, Send, should me should me a couple of, a couple of times that you know are gonna work, and and I can sort of draw a doodle poll or something that that is gonna have that, and with with having everybody having in mind that we we need to be flexible. Some of us can be more flexible than others because of our profession or because of our lives, and and I appreciate that, and I know that everybody's sort of trying their best here. Is there any other new business? Oh, as I said, ACLU, uh, the Carcerary Western Mass. Tomorrow at 6.30, we are doing a presentation about the power of sheriffs 
in the in the uh, criminal legal system in Massachusetts. So uh, if you go to the Forbes Library website, you're gonna find the link. <laughs> Cool. Um, excellent. So I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. Motion. Make a motion to adjourn. Oh, sorry. Okay, let's just have it. Mara, motion to adjourn. Looking for a second. I'll second. Gary, second motion to adjourn. Beth. Beth, you're muted. Javier, would you like to adjourn? Would you like to adjourn, Javier? Yes. Jamila? Yes. Mara? Yes. Uh, Jenna? Yes. Eric? Yes. And Cynthia? Yes. At 816.